Welcome into the CHGO Blackhawks podcast presented by DraftKings Sportsbook, America's top-rated sportsbook. Download the app and use promo code CHGO when you sign up. Welcome in. Jay Zawoski, Greg Boyson, and Mario Tirabasi here in our West Loop studios. Well, it's the offseason, and we've already got some stuff to talk about. We've got the playoff games from last night, which went exactly how everyone thought they were going to. Totally. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. That's what happened. Uh, we've got uh, some Rockford Icehawks playoff games starting tonight. tonight. Mario and I will be there. Yeah. We've also got uh, several Blackhawks prospects in their uh, playoffs. We'll get to that as well. Doing well. But let's start with what Mark Lazarus wrote this morning, excuse me, for the uh, Athletic. Mm-hmm. Um, sort of alluding to the fact that some members of the 2013 Blackhawks team um, felt a little bit disrespected that the Hawks didn't throw them a party for their 10-year anniversary. No, I'm not even alluding to it. He, he said from from players, unnamed uh, anonymous players from that team, that they they feel like the, the team is trying to just forget them. And it's... It's a weird situation because yes, you would you would think without you know hesitation initially that yeah the 2013 team that historically good team in the um, you know lockout shortened season Stanley Cup champion like probably arguably the best constructed of the three Stanley Cup teams you would think without question that that would be honored but given everything that we know now that has come up uh, about the Blackhawks and about that era of, of Blackhawks hockey, things get a little murky when you try and honor those players, honor the past. We saw it with um, Jonathan Taze and, and honoring him in his last game as a Blackhawk. There is a lot of external around the league and even you know fans still within the Blackhawks community that are uh, critical of him and his role of, of what happened to... Uh, Kyle Beach in 2010 and and the way things were handled by players on that team um, the, the the players get you know uh, ricochet criticism from the criticism of how management at that time uh, handled everything and and you know we talked about it yesterday jo- uh, Joel Joel Quenville and Stan Bohm Stan Snowman um, that was a dollar. That's a that's fifty cents. That's fifty cents. Um, <laughs> Too bad the jar is in Pittsburgh. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'll Venmo the jar. Um, you know, we talked about those two guys and and how they're probably eventually going to find their way back into hockey and how that's that's wrong, uh, shouldn't be happening. But we're all still those memories of those cup teams are still there, and the, those players still did those things. So it's a hard balance yeah. of trying to figure out how do you honor the honor that time that and, and those players and those teams while also being conscious of like hey like some messed up shit went down i to me this is a whole you you text us the quote this morning in our little group chat i was kind of like meh like it, to me it seems that there's a there's a there's a lot of people that just constantly want to be mad at the blackhawks Yes. Over every little thing. There definitely is that. And it's like, there are plenty of reasons to really be mad and disappointed in this franchise. This ain't one of them. Yeah. This ain't the hill to die on. And it's been 10 years. Yeah. That's not that long. Like, do, do every franchise do it? Like, you won three in six years. If you're going to do every five years, basically every year you're honoring somebody. Eventually it's going to get old. You still have five guys on that team as active players. Two of them started and played three quarters of the team with you. And this was a season trying to clear the deck, move on, yeah. start a new era. How can you start a new era if you just keep looking backwards? How are you going to get Nick Letty and Brandon Saad in from the Blues to celebrate? How are you going to get Antti Ranta from the Carolina Hurricanes to come in and celebrate? Like, what's the point of doing it if you can't have them all there? Right. So when, yeah. it, maybe 20 years seems a little better. Like, there's an old... One of my favorite wrestle, pro wrestling personalities of all time, I listen to his podcast all the time, Jim Cornette has a saying that he said about wrestling, about why they take guys away for a while and then bring them back. Like, how can I miss you if you never go away? Right. Yeah, so how yeah. can you be nostalgic about something that up until a f- literally a week ago was still here? Yeah. So it's okay. Do something 
for you, you, you have the 100th anniversary coming up in two, three years. Honor all three of those teams because you had so many guys that were a part of multiple championships. Six guys were part of all three. Yeah. You had a lot of guys from 2013 that was part of 2010. Yes, there's all the kind of ickiness that goes with it. What are you going to do? You're going to bring back John McDonough and he who should not be named and Joe Quinville to honor that team? No, you're not going to do that. That would be really gross. No, you can't. So it's okay. Ten years is not that big a deal. Did you go to your 10-year high school no. reunion? Yeah. Because you still hung out with all those guys. I did. Well, you did. Okay. Yeah. But you moved away. That was your, your yeah. thing. Yeah. It your, was fun. I, had, I, I, I never, I've never been to a high school reunion because I figured like the six guys I still want to talk to from high school, I still talk to. Yeah. Them. Yeah. If I wanted to talk to those other guys, I'd still talk to them. Yeah. Um, so I don't think it's like a slap in the face. I don't think it's something intentional. Yeah, they did the HOSA thing this year. That's a look in the past. But that seemed to be more like the perfect way to end Marion HOSA's book tour, retired his <laughs> number. Like, yeah. It, yeah. And that was a feel-good moment in a season that did not provide a lot of feel-good moments. Well, so well, maybe it, do something in the summer. Yeah. Do something for the 100th anniversary where you, you acknowledge all those teams throughout the course of that season. You can bring back players yeah. that have been part of all three of those teams, two of those teams. I don't know. Ten years to me is not like this huge, like momentous thing, especially when some of those guys are still in the league and some of those guys only retired within the last year or two. Well, and Steven has the, the, the graphic, the, the, the clip from the article. This is from uh, Mark Lazarus of The Athletic. And he says, uh, a, a team source said the team did have plans for the 10th anniversary of that, se that season of 2019-2020, uh, honoring the 2010 team. Nothing beyond the giveaways that was noted in the season's promotional schedule. Uh, Earlier in, in the article, he says that there were um, 2010 commemorative bobbleheads given away that year. Uh, so continues, but that they were interrupted by the pandemic. So this was supposed to happen before the season shut down. With that in mind, the Blackhawks do plan to honor all three championship teams, 2010, 13, and 15, during their centennial season in 2025-26, which will be a season-long celebration that's still in the early planning stages, so members of the 2015 team likely will have to wait an extra year for their 10-year anniversary celebration as well. So, to your point, they're still going to do something right. according to what the, the team is uh, supposedly planning, and when we talked with Danny Wirtz and Jamie Faulkner at the beginning of this season, you know, we were having kind of the conversation surrounding, you know, Hosa and 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 Jersey retirements, and you know, how do you how do you honor all these all these players um, that were all part of those cup cup teams, and you know, talking about Ring of Honor, Blackhawks Hall of Fame, things like that, and they had mentioned about that centennial year being a really big. Um, kind of blowout celebration. So it makes sense if they're going to say, hey, we missed honoring the 2010 team uh, because of the pandemic, that they're going to say, you know what, all three of those teams are going to be honored in one celebration and it's going to be a big blowout that's going to take a couple years of planning and it's going to be part of this centennial Blackhawks celebration in a few years. If that's the case, if that had been communicated to the players, I think they would probably understand that. Um, I think there's probably a, a missing piece of that communication if these players from 2013 are feeling slighted. There's a couple things here. So, like like Greg said, someone's always be mad at the Blackhawks for something. So rightfully if, so, honestly, what rightfully so? Well, no, they've, they've earned that. Right, there's but let plenty me, of things to be I, mad at the organization of course, about. Let me yes. let me make my point. What I'm saying is, people will be pissed if they honor them. People will be pissed if they don't honor them. Yeah. So if they're truly learning from their mistakes, and I'm dubious about that based on the Pride Night thing, the thing to do would be not honor those teams, right? Like, you want to move past it? You want to cut, sever all ties to everyone that was here when Kyle Beach was here, which I believe is the right thing to do? Yeah, they yeah. won games. They were great players. They had great moments. They've all been honored individually, right? And there's more honors to come. But they can't operate over who's going to be more mad at us. The old right. school fans who don't care about the social issues or the people that do. And it shouldn't be a calculus. What they should do is what they think is right. And I hope that's how the Blackhawks are operating. Again, 
not so sure because I think Jamie Faulkner and Danny Wirtz, based on my limited knowledge of them and conversations with them, are people who would they come off as people who would be supportive of the LGBTQ plus community. Mm. However, they both let that community down on Pride Night by not getting out in front of it and talking about it. Here's another example of a situation where they have declined comment, declined comment, declined comment, declined comment. What happened to all the transparency? And I'm not saying they should comment on every question everyone has about everything they do, but when something becomes a bigger issue, they've got to be forward-facing. They can't just be forward-facing for the good times. They can't just be forward-facing for the good news because that is not transparency. It's not. Yeah. And it's and if your transparency is limited to your hockey vision, fine, but state that, right? Because they said transparency top to bottom, and all I see lately is decline comments or no comments or anything yeah. or telling their news through a, through various sources instead of directly to their fans. And that's frustrating. Yeah. I will say this too about the players. And I have been 20 years old before. Everyone in this room has been 20 years old before. And I don't think, this is just my opinion, knowing what I know about covering hockey for 20 years, being a, a young white male, there are, well, I was a young white male, not anymore. I'm black now. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm old now. Um, so when you're presented, when, when, when men are presented with something uncomfortable, the vast majority of the instinct is to ignore it or to go, ooh, that's, that's weird. I don't want to talk about that. And, and if I had to kind of guess on how things went around Kyle Beach player-wise mostly is, did you hear about this? Yes, I heard about that. Wow, that's messed up. Holy cow, I don't want to talk about this. It's gross. The season ends. Brad Aldrich is fired or gone. Brad Aldrich is gone from the team, and they go, wow, I guess that was true. He's gone. All right, it's handled, and they move on with their lives, right? Is that the right thing to do? Nope. Is it what a lot of us would have done in the same situation? Maybe. So for me, as we look forward to celebrating or honoring or whatever you want to call these cup teams, I think the people that need to be excluded 100% is the leadership. Quenville, McDonough, he who shall not be named, Al McIsaac, all of the people who the players trust to do the right thing on their behalf, those are the ones who should really, really be excluded from not just cup celebrations, but from the effing world of hockey because they're the ones that failed Kyle Beach primarily. Yes, all of his teammates could have done a better job. Maybe they should have been more proactive in the moment. But again, they're 22, 23-year-old kids focusing on a playoff series, hearing rumors, right? I don't think Kyle Beach, and he never said that he went to teammates about this. He went to leadership about this. He didn't go tell Jonathan Taves, hey, this happened to me, right? Yeah. So as we look at how to honor or whatever in the future, I think that the players as a collective, I guess that's okay, right? I, I You can't really not do anything, I don't think, right? I think that that's really kind of a, I don't know. I, I would be fine if, if they did nothing. If they, the banners are there. If they hadn't done anything this year and 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 what Mark uh, wrote never came out, I wouldn't have thought twice about it. No, I didn't even think about it until it came out. So. Right. And they never came out and said, we're not honoring these teams ever again either. No, they never did. There's going to be a ton of times for these guys to get back here. There's going to be retirement, jersey retirements over the next few years. They're all going to come back and celebrate and really – you don't need a special night for each team because there's going to be so many different occasions for those guys to get back together and yeah. celebrate their accomplishments. So and would it be fun? Sure, it'd be great. Am I losing sleep because it didn't happen this year? No, I didn't right. even, like you said, and didn't even cross my mind at one, at one and point. And logistically to do something like this for that, for that team in season is difficult because, like you said, they're still active players. If they, had, if they coordinated something to happen in June – you know, around around the actual 10-year anniversary, around the time that they actually won the cup that year, in the summer when all those guys are off and say, hey, it's a get-together. Public or private, doesn't matter. Like, if they, the had done, if they had done something like that, 
Like this, Make the it's not a big deal. Blackhawks charity golf outing all about the 2013 team. Do they still do that? I, I, I don't mean, know if they I, did that last year. Anyways, do, but, do something like that. Have a yeah. golf outing. The, those guys, that's where they all want but to it, be in July anyway. Yeah, and but it seems like from from what La, uh, uh, Lazarus said in the article is that the team does have something planned to honor those guys. So I think it just seems like maybe some players from the 13 team feel slighted. I I don't know. I it it, it does seem like something that is in the works it's maybe just not been communicated um by the way they, they so, in fairness to the blackhawks they don't have to update their former teams on what their plans no, are for they them. don't like they've like got they're, a, they're working they've on they've got a lot thing. going on they've got yes. a few more important things on their plate than making sure andrew shaw knows if they're going to get uh you know honored or not not saying he's the guy that's causing well, he, it but he enjoyed his night in the suite when yeah, they were he honoring there, he, he, and mike gapsky yeah, he, he, he got his problem. camera time he, he plays in the legend cup so it's probably not i'm just that was the first guy that popped in no i know but it's it's like, it's not like these guys have been have, forgotten they don't have to call brandon bolig and be like sorry brandon we're not going to get to you this year maybe next right, year they, right. they've got other things to worry about yeah, I, it's like, a little like I get why people get on the Blackhawks' ass, and rightfully so. They have earned yeah the distrust of people across the league. They've earned that. They, and every time you think they're trying, they've made a step forward, two steps backwards, right back where we start, mm-hmm. and it's frustrating because I legitimately think that Danny Wirtz and Jamie Faulkner are trying their best when they tell you that they want to do all these things and they want to be transparent. I believe them. But then it's say one thing, do something different in a- certain situations. Actions and have to speak louder at some point. And I understand why people are frustrated. I'm frustrated at certain things aspect-wise too. But to just look for things to be mad about, it's exhausting. Because if you're going to be outraged about every little thing this organization does or doesn't do, you're actually serving yourself a disservice. Because if you're going to just be mad all the time, people are going to start tuning you out to be like, well, there he is, or there she is, the old mad Maggie. She's always mad at something. Old I'm going to old Maggie. mad Maggie out of this. <laughs> She's a saint. That's, that's, my, that's my favorite Rod Stewart album, by the way. Um, but no, it's just like if you just keep yelling about everything, eventually people are just going to be like, I don't care what this person says anymore. They're always yeah. just screaming at me. So pick and choose your battles. To me, this ain't one of them. I, I, yeah, I, it's, there's, there's other reasons to be really upset with this organization, and, and this it seems like just part of a, a side, a, a, you know, a, a thing on the side to kind of add add to your fire if you choose to have one. Um, but I but I, I I think you're both of you guys have, have you know kind of alluded to it with the front office. Transparency needs to be like a real thing, and and this team is still got a long way to go to build up trust within not only the the hockey world as a whole but also within their own fan community. Like there's a lot of Blackhawks fans that have been lost or that are, um, you know, not, not wanting to come back to the team because of what's happened. Um, and I think as much as, as, as Danny Wirtz and Jamie Faulkner want to do the right things, like you were saying, Jay, um, you know, I, I, and they talk about the transparency. It can't be selective. I think it has to be, you know, you either are, you either are going to do it or you aren't. Uh, and, I, I would hope that how we perceived them and how they were doing their, their jobs uh, since they kind of assumed those roles and assumed a little bit more of the forward-facing you know, front office image of the organization uh, a little bit more than Rocky is at this time. Uh, the way we were talking about them for months, we, we had a lot of confidence in what they were doing. And um, I, I mean, for me, it's just the, the last few, few months, few weeks of how things have, have gone. It's uh, it, it's it's changed a bit. I think they they need to if they want to be transparent, if they want to be open and honest with their fans, uh, I think that that has got to that has to be backed up by action. You can talk about wanting to be honest and transparent and wanting to you know make sure that the the, the fan base is 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 behind you again a hundred percent. Um, you can you can say all those things, but if there's no actions to try and back that up, um, it's it's going to fall short. And if you now with this 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 recent trend of, you know, no comment or declined comment or anything like that, or just putting out a vague statement. You can't ask questions to a statement. Yeah. You can't, you can't try to get anything more out of yeah. a declined comment. So that's when, you know, people like us, people on, on online, people like 
you know, all the, all the beat writers, uh, you know, extended and everything, then we have to have those discussions and we have to answer those questions and try and come up with our own answers when we don't have the information anyways. So it makes it, it makes it harder for the real story and, 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 you know, that real trust to be built from the organization. And well, kind of circling back to like, to the beginning point too, is like early in the season, I won't get specific, but like I was expressed frustration by Blackhawks leadership for not fully understanding a situation. I go, how was I to understand this? Right. You never said anything about it. You never told me anything about it. So I am left here to talk to this source and this source and this source and this source, the ones that will talk to me and take what they say, try to compare it and come up with, with, you know, try to glean what I think I know. Right. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like called into the principal's office. (laughs) <laughs> right. You know, yeah. and it's like, and the explanation is, okay, cool. Thank you. I'm glad I have that knowledge now, but don't be upset with me because I didn't before. And it's, that's the thing with the pride night is the entire message was delivered through sources. Right. There was no official team statement on that. There was no official statement on not wearing the pride jerseys. There was nothing with Blackhawks letterhead on that. It was all done via team sources and everybody's got different ones. Right. But the message was the same. We're not going to wear the jerseys. Here's the reasons right, why, right. right? And it's like, wait a minute. This this requires some back and forth. This requires some Q&A, and it was nowhere to be found. And that's where, like you said, we're left to deal with it. Fine. It's our job. It's I love my job. job. I don't yeah. care. Great. But when when we're left to deal with it or fans are left to deal with it or whoever are left to deal with it, that's when crap starts growing wild. Okay, can I just – yesterday, you guys know – Yesterday, I witnessed a fatal car accident on my way into work. Um, it was bad. I almost didn't make it here. Like, I was going to take a day off, but I'm like, screw it. I'm not going to sit home and be sad. So, came here, did the show, went home, and just kind of hung out. And, of course, like the neighborhood Facebook page pops up, right? And it's like, I heard that this happened. I heard the car was going 110 miles an hour, and and we was weaving in and out of traffic, and the you know the semi is what hit it and like they're going through all these details I'm like none of this is true right. none of this is true none of this is what happened and people are just saying it and it's becoming truth because enough people are consuming it take a look at the freaking world around us mm-hmm. yeah. right when things are not directly addressed false rumors spread like wildfire Become we truth we joke about it about the alleged i'm not going to use the word but things between teammates back in the day Right. Right. And that was all like blog fodder. Right. And like, and I'm not saying the team should have addressed that because it was complete nonsense, but I'm just saying what I'm talking about is like the wildfire aspect of rumor, 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 rumor. And then enough people repeat the rumor or don't know how to comprehend the difference between a rumor, speculation and truth. Mm -hmm. And then everything's out of control. It's a bad game of telephone. Get in front of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Get in front of it. That's how misinformation, that's how conspiracy theories start. That's yes. how people, you know, get bad reputations. Uh, because and if enough people say something, they yeah. believe it. And look, there's, there's, like you said, there's things that need addressing and things that you're just like, that's not, I'm not even going to waste my time with it. I, I fully understand that. But I, I think like, like, like we've said, like the, the Pride Night situation, I think that needed more addressing. This situation, if if the team were to say, "Look, we have these things in planned. All those teams are going to be honored. This is why we're doing it." We, you know, if if they want to say, you know, we acknowledge it's whatever. Uh, I think that would be that would make more sense than again. This is something that's coming out of a team source says they're doing this, and and but no, but no comment from the team. Like it's 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 a hard hard line to walk where you know you have to say like. What what is what is the story and what's what's worth being told? What is the story? But I think there's been times where I, I think I know what you're alluding to the the, the story. I, I think that was a time where a little bit more of what was of what was told would have would have helped. Yeah, and listen, hey, the, go back to Danny and Jamie. I know a show that they can come on anytime they want and talk to directly to the fans. Open invite. Yep. Sure. Anytime yeah. you guys anytime. want. Even if you're mad at us. Yeah. Come on a show and yell at us. That's fine. And tell us we're stupid and we don't know what we're talking about. Fine. Because all I want to do, and I think I speak for the three of us, is we want to be as informed as we can mm-hmm. and let fans know what is really happening. And we 
do our work to do that. I don't think we come in here and just wildly speculate crap. No. We talk to people. No, there's plenty of outlets to get that. Yes, speculation we bend home. ears. We try to, you know, we, we're in the locker room. We're talking to players. We're digging, you know, watching the body language of stuff. And we're not just, like, throwing stuff out here trying to get clicks. Oh. The thing we wrote yesterday, I wrote yesterday about Alex Vlasic. I made sure in the piece that I didn't use walking on eggshells in any headlines of the story because I knew it would be clickbaity. And I didn't want to mislead what Alex Vlasic was trying to say. That's not what we're trying to do here. Mm-hmm. None of the CHGO shows are trying to do that here. No. We're trying to give you the best information we can. And if you've got information for us, Jamie, Danny, by all means, we will take it. We'll pull up two chairs for you, put you right in the middle, whatever you want. We'll get the 312s out, whatever you're into, sure. yeah. and, it'll, and, we'll, and it'll be great. Like We welcome that, and we welcome being challenged. Because if we're wrong, we will admit it. Like I don't think that's – I'm not right all the time. I've like, been, I've been right. wrong numerous times. Yeah. Just look at my Stanley Cup predictions. I'm wrong all the time. <laughs> I will admit when I'm wrong. If yeah. you, if I come up with something and you prove to me that the opposite is true, I will gladly wear it. Uh, I think – are we good? Any more we want to hit? I just want to make one more little point. Go for it. There's a lot of people in the chat saying, take politics out of sports. All right. Well, we're not even talking. What are we talking about politics? Well, anytime that LGBTQ stuff comes up, it's politics. It's political. That's just who people No anthem. Get rid of military appreciation. Right. First responders. No first responders night. Get rid of it all. You're not honoring any former uh, soldiers on the ice anymore. Yep. That's not political. It's just because you don't like it doesn't make it political. Right. Just because the people being honored you don't agree with or you don't agree with their lifestyle or whatever. That you're saying take politics out of sports. You're taking take the NFL is a commercial about. for the military. Yeah, it is. A, it is literally a commercial. And the military the flyovers. The military and pays and them a lot of money. Our taxpayers' yes. dollars is going to the NFL for all that crap. So if you want politics out of the game, cool. If you want the puck to drop at seven thirty five thirty five with no Jim Cornelison and no O Canada on those special nights, mm-hmm. cool. Take politics out. That's a different show for a different for day. <laughs> for but sure. don't just say politics are Black History Night, American Heritage History Month, and LGBTQ Pride Night. Right. Because if that's all you want to eliminate, that's a different story, and that's a different conversation. <sighs> you, are, you are correct. Well, let's start a new conversation. How about those cracking? Hey, how about that? <laughs> let's start a new conversation. Let's start a conversation about the best darn sunglasses yes. money can buy. Take on the sun with gear built to last. Our friends at Shaderays have you covered for the warm weather ahead with premium Polaroid shades at affordable price. Shaderays is an independent sunglasses company that offers a world-class product that's just as good, I say even better, than any expensive pair that I've ever worn. Durable frames and extremely clear optics for outdoors adventures or even just driving to work. They are awesome. They make everything crisp and clear. And that's not all. Shady Rays offers the most insane protection in all of eyewear. Every pair of sunglasses is backed by the Shady Rays Lost and Broken Replacements program. If you lose or break your pair, even on the very first day, they told us they'll send you a brand new pair. No questions asked. Wear your Shady Rays with confidence because you have. To, they have your back after Long after you purchase, I'll get it right. Together with their customers, Shady Rays is providing much-needed support to nonprofit partners through the Shady Rays Impact Initiative. They do everything from building play sets for pediatric cancer patients to providing young adults with MS with the outdoor adventure of a lifetime. Shady Rays is making an impact in your community and others just like it now and for years to come. So look great and feel great at the same time when you buy your Shady Rays. And if you don't love them, you can exchange them for a new pair or return them absolutely free within 30 days of purchase. There's no risk when you shop because Shady Rays always has your back. And exclusively for our listeners, Shady Rays is giving out their best deal of the season. Go to ShadyRays.com, use the promo code CHGO, and you'll get 50% off any order of two or more pairs of awesome sunglasses. The more you buy, the more you save. Try for yourself the shades rated five stars by over 200 and 50,000 people. And summer is coming, and while you're decked out in your Shady Rays, you're going to want to look good in your favorite sports gear. That's why we have partnered with our friends at Foco. You can get fitted out in the best sports gear around, but it's not just sports gear. It's collectibles like bobbleheads. They've got slippers. They've got clocks. Anything you can imagine with a Blackhawks logo on it or a Chicago sports logo on it or really any team sports logo on it, 
Foco has you covered hoodies, shoes, signs, everything in between. It is spring and baseball season. Get yourself a nice Aloha shirt, a straw hat, polo shirts. They've got uh, bags to bring to the games, everything you need. We've got our set decorations here. You can look behind us at all the bobbleheads and all the great gear we've got from Foco right behind us there. We've got those. I'm not putting one on today. It's a million degrees, but that giant Blackhawks like parka thing. That is awesome. That came in handy in the cold winter months. Mm -hmm. It's great. They have donated a bunch of their items for our set, so we appreciate them. Go show them some love for doing it. Check out Foco.com or click the link in the description below. For all non-presale items, use the promo code CHGO for 10% off. That's Foco.com, F-O-C-O.com. Bill has a good question in the chat. He does? When is when is the beard shaving commencing? Yeah, I'm going to shave the beard. I was going to say we've gone almost three shows without I know. addressing this. So <laughs> it is uh it is Get soft away for team photos or something. Yeah, like yeah. That. Team photos are Saturday uh, for softball. Saturday, December fifth. And I don't want the, I don't want the players to look at the photo and go, "Who is that guy?" Like I showed I shaved a couple years ago. Like what was he? I think I just did it because I got. Fr- oh no, I made a mistake. I like we went get- too far, and I'm like, "Well, I got to go from scratch." Yeah. And I showed up at the ballparks in Homewood, and people were like, they didn't know who I was. They, I was like talking to people, and they're like, yeah. Is that John? They had no idea who I was. It's not Jay. Like, I don't know if the beard is that identifiable, but uh, I will do it next week. We'll find a good day to do it. Um, mm-hmm. I'm going to try to go with this. I'm going to get a stash like Steven, I think. Don't, don't do that. Steven's got, I, Steven doesn't want a stash like Steven. Steven's got a mustache. <laughs> and he's got the chin, though, too. He's got the chin going, too. Uh, Chuck Omoko says straight razor style. I cannot do straight razor because then I look like I'm 12. Just use a use a hockey skate. I have a, <laughs> there you go. Yeah. yeah, I have a beard trimmer uh, that I will use to uh, to clean up the beard. It'll be it'll be to the skin, but it won't be like razor. We should get. Um, I'm gonna bring my beard king too, so it doesn't get all over the place. We should get like a, one of those old timey barbers to come in here and do like a yeah. like the hot oil. Thing. Yeah, with the hot. Hot shaving cream and stuff. That'd be kind of cool to experience. Get, That'd be uh, fun. Get the shaving stone out where they. Yeah. 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 That'd yeah. be fun. Let's we'll see. see. Any any any, any barbers, school. old school barbers in the Chicago area? Got to be a few. Give us a give us a call. That's four or five of them left. down. That's fine. I could do it that way. I just you know, it's gonna look weird. Uh, when are pitchers? Saturday. Oh, okay. okay. So, so they're coming right. up soon. We can yeah. do something next week. Yeah, yeah cool. So. That's fine. I'm down for it. Hey, I'm I'm a man of my word. Uh, hey, to. by the way, we haven't mentioned this yet. Friday at 2 o'clock. Yeah, speaking of things to look forward to. We're going to talk to Mackenzie Entwistle. He's going to join us on the show. Somebody who's uh, never had to shave. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. Uh, heading into the off season, we want to catch up with uh, some Hawks before things wrap up. So Mackenzie Entwistle will join us. Looking forward to that. It's be a lot of um, fun. He is really one of my favorite Hawks as a dude. Um, super easy to talk to. Really thoughtful when you hear him speak on Friday, you're going to understand why the Hawks think so highly of him. Yeah. Um, I, I'm really looking forward to the conversation. And we are going to play for him. Yes. We will discuss our we'll let him in on ongoing bit. joke bit. Yes. <laughs> um, it should be... I, I'm, I'm let's very s- interested to see how he reacts let's to it. Let's save that seems to like, the very end. He seems like someone that would uh, take it take it well, but it also could be super awkward. So we'll yeah, see. Save that for the end because we don't want to be like... <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to start the in- interview. We're like, hey, we've been joking that your parents have been dead the whole yeah, we're season. Not, we're so tell us about that power well, play. So, <laughs> not, the great, not, well, the, not the greatest icebreaker. Let's have the meeting on the air right now. Like, I think the way we do it is we've been, you said something a little awkwardly, Lad. You put it on him. Like, you well, said totally this. You said this, and we've had <laughs> oh, some fun with yeah. it all year. Yeah. Um, can, yeah. And we already have any comments. Bill says, can we confirm he has a family? Ready? He Edwin does. says, condolences yes, for his family. Does. I love that, like, the little <laughs> silly nonsense that we use we just get, to get yeah. through the minutia of a long season that our, our, our diehards there, and listeners uh, incorporate as well. There have been times where, you know, we've the three of us are from the show account. We've tweeted something about Entwistle and we'll get replies like, Oh, if only his family could see him. <laughs> it's just, it's just great. I'm just, I'm just so glad that that I, is, that has become bigger than just our little, our little thing. I recently ran into a TikTok account, uh, that was telling like a bunch of like orphan jokes. Oh, and I was just like, <laughs> you're writing them down. I was just like replacing Mackenzie Entwistle with oh, orphan man. forever joke. And like, cause my favorite one was, <laughs> You can you can you can use the Mad Lib if you want, but why do orphans play tennis? <laughs> you said this one because before. that's the only place they get love. 
Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, waka so, waka. Yeah. Bill is asking the butt about the button. Oh, the uh, urinal I button. think the button it's gone. is RIP. officially RIP. RIP. We're bringing all the bits back in one We've, day. Yeah. Seriously. <laughs> We've uh, off season hockey. Let's have a bit draft. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The button was not a bit, though. No, no, that just that from, just fell into our lap, so to say. Well, <laughs> fell into our <laughs> urinal. Um, yeah, that was what November ish. It was, that Hosa was, it was after. It yeah. was shortly after was, Hosa, was, but it was, was not his button. That it was his button, but he did not have any buttons on it. Was sure. not his button. Uh, and it was. It was. It's been there since November, and it, it left la- our presence in the while. last over the weekend, maybe. Yeah, or yeah early I think it was week. over the weekend. I came in Monday, and it, the the office smelled fresh and clean. Obviously, the cleaning crew had been there. The spring clean. And I went the, to use the bathroom, and I looked down to see how many points I can score, and it was gone. It was gone. <laughs> Go juggle the button. Unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, it was. It's sad. Not what are we going to do? I'm going to bring in a bag of buttons from home and just. Yeah, <laughs> I, think, I think every one of my Roosevelt's comes with like an extra button. I there you go. There you go. A couple off. What are the ads? It was one of yours. No, I would know. No, because that was just a, it was just a little but white button. A, but not a, many of my Roosevelt's have white buttons. Okay. Uh, okay. Fair, fair, and fair. they actually say uh, Roosevelt's on the button. Oh, I so. wasn't getting close enough to read the button. It was there long enough. <laughs> you could have inspected. You it. can take it out, look at it, and put yeah, it back. No, I, I, hey. I wasn't going to do that. Now, when Hosa was here, we did. Moses Salu would have went in there. He might have. Yeah. Just toughen your hands up. Uh, didn't Lawrence save Hosa's water bottle? He did we he might have for a, for a bit? Office. I think we were going to clone him. Were we <laughs> supposed to like put it in a? Uh, we were put it in a box. box. Yeah, put it in a box. Yeah, we, eh. if we're going to clone him though. We got to take out the skin condition. We got to swap the. Well, well, they can I'm do sure so many do things, things with genetics yeah. now. I'm no <laughs> expert, but I'm sure they can do that, and we can have a whole team of Hosas. It'll be like yeah. Saturday Night Live. Who wins the 2013 Blackhawks or a team full of mini Hosas? Take a team mini full of Hosas. <laughs> mini Hosas, 18 to negative two. That's right. Um, but no yeah. doubt about that. Anyways, yeah. Friday. Friday. Two be a lot o'clock. Of fun. It's been. You know what? And Whistle is one of those players that uh, it has been really fun to see him progress through the Blackhawks uh, organization because uh, I, I started paying attention to him uh, years ago when he was with Guelph in the OHL and uh, to see him come through that, that process as a prospect, go through his time with the ice hogs. We had some opportunities, Greg and I to, to talk with him when he was in Rockford. Uh, and then, yeah, to see him come kind of come up and become a regular NHL player. Like it's been a lot of fun to see, to see that progress. And yeah, he's not the, you know, guy who's going to light up the score sheet every night but he's 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 a fine young player that knew how to change his role uh in in hockey that was going to get him to the nhl and i think that that is something that not a lot of young players learn uh so he's he's a great example of that so uh it's gonna be fun gonna be fun to talk talk i'm sorry i'm laughing at ready edgemont who said uh at whistle's nickname should totally be batman Batman. And then he said one earlier that said, ask him if he has any childhood stories and see how sad he gets. <laughs> God. Jesus. I, I can't wait for the chat oh, on the Friday Batman. afternoon. It's going to be wild. Yes, remember, folks, uh, on Friday, Mackenzie will see the he chat. See the chat. <laughs> so yes. let's let's save the family jokes until we let him in on the bit. Yes, please. Or else he's going to be like, what the hell what did I just going get myself on? into? Uh, we got yeah. a $1 super chat from Young Dangle God. Uh, thank you for that. And it uh, reminds me, the oh, one dollar yeah, he, He's because, paying up yes, his dollar. Because of his previous comment. Oh, did he say the name? Yeah, no, he, he said no, uh, he's, certain, he's, someone was going to come back. He said maybe the button will come back like Kaner this offseason. Oh, and then right. us yeah. dollar, I thought it was so. the other dollar. We, we appreciate no. the... Uh, we appreciate the... Um, the stick the, the commitment to the bit. The integrity. Yeah. yeah. I don't know how it's taken me 39 minutes to mention this, but walking in today... Yes. I crossed paths with he who shall not be named. He walked right past me on Monroe. Like we, I was going east. He was coming west. He had two dogs with him, and he had a little double take, right? I yeah, we were both kind of like made eye contact, and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I give the very obvious like scrunchy face. I know who you are, and he did kind of the, I know who you are too, kind of a thing. Ooh. It was weird. I I I don't know. Like I don't. That's another thing I wouldn't know how to handle. Like if he had talked to me. So, like hey Jay, you son of a bitch. <laughs> like do I turn into Vince McMahon on him or like? I know it's weird. I don't know. I'm an awkward person uh, with with everyone, let alone so that would be that would be quite the interesting so how you been out in the world organic conversation to have. So breaking news: uh, Stan Bowman not taking the Pittsburgh Penguins job. Is that what you're telling us? I guess not. He's still in Chicago. Yeah, apparently. 
Mm-hmm. He's walking his dogs. Maybe that. Maybe he's a dog walker now. Maybe that's his new job. Maybe. <laughs> hey, uh, I don't think he's hurting uh, for money. Uh, <laughs> Rover. I mean, is, it makes perfect ro- sense. Rover is would... the service that you can hire a dog walker. I oh, almost, yeah. I almost did that. And then, uh, you know, the pandemic happened. So no one wanted strangers yeah. to come and get their dogs. Well, you can meet Bailey and then just have confirmation you don't want to do that. Sure. My new dog is I, still I love dogs. I love dogs. I got a little chunker at home. Yeah, I know. He's great. still, it was definitely him. Um, I definitely made a long, long <laughs> look like, is that, am I, are my eyes deceiving me? But yeah, it was him. And it makes sense. I mean, we're blocks from the UC. This is where he's going to live. His yeah, office is there. Yeah, this seems like an area where he'd there. land. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that was kind of strange. That was a strange, uh, strange part of my day. So can we say his name if we get him on the show? Are we allowed to say his name? If now? we, do you think he'd ever be on the show? No, never. No. Unless he, unless he wants to burn it to the ground. Not our show, but everything. If he wants to be like, want to know what happened? Here's what happened. Blowtorch. Yeah. I think he wants to work again. And he ain't going to do I that mean, on our he's show. He's going to write a book and make money. Yeah, off of that. he just doesn't have there's the personality another, to do there's that. There's another no. hockey podcast that would gladly have that content. Yes. And then make sure it's about him when he leaves. About what? Make sure, t-shirts about him when he leaves. Oh, sure. Or is that yeah, different course. podcast? That's, we have t-shirts. Same thing. <sighs> well... Should we get to last night's playoff action? Is that this week week hasn't been weird enough yet? That was fun. How about road teams, man? Woo. Yeah. Six of the eight game ones have been won by the road team, including all four last night and all four in the Western Conference. So there's that old saying, a series doesn't start until the road team wins. Well, these series are off to a very early start. Very very, uh, very quick starts. A couple of, uh, wow, I can't believe that happened last night. Not the Maple Leafs. I can totally Mm -hmm. believe they pissed down their pants when when, uh, the playoffs come a-calling. I don't know if you would have predicted 7-3. No, I wouldn't (laughs) have. But, I mean, they're, I don't know. Again, all the pressure's on them. Mm -hmm. They give up a goal early in the game. They're down 3 nothing after the end of the first. And to their credit, they came back and scored two goals. And then, you know, Michael Bunton being a shithead. And they're <laughs> all, you know, and then they want to let the referee, you know, okay, here, I'm going to go on my Maple Leaf rant. And it's not geared towards the team. Let's go. Most of my Game one. <laughs> most of my hatred for the Maple Leafs has nothing to do with the team got to do with the most annoying entitled fan base who hasn't won shit in almost 60 years get over yourselves get over yourselves to get on twitter last night i was hosting a trivia night last night so i didn't really see all those most of the game i saw, i had it on my ipad i saw a little bit of it but to get home and to start reading twitter and and seeing the majority of Leafs fans and chris chelios who's just trying to get a cheap pop in toronto complaining about the officiating are you really going to blame the refs that you got your ass handed to you on home ice seven here's your ass seven to three that yeah there were some questionable calls no doubt but you gave up a touchdown and an yeah, extra point right you gave up a goal a minute and 18 in the game it had nothing to do with the refs you scored your two goals in the second period and got back into the game on the power play. Yep. So yep. stop crying about the officiating. Your team, maybe yell at them. Maybe be mad at them. The team that can't get it done. They choke every year. And at least, hey, they might not be waiting the game seven this year. They might have gotten, do it now. And yeah. like, forget it, man. Like, stop blaming the officials. Yell at your team for completely underachieving and folding under the pressure. They boot him off the ice. I'll get in that. Yeah. The the I, the problem is this time of year in hockey, the officials become one of the top targets of fan bases uh, and sometimes players and coaches of of the teams that lose lose games, lose big games. Um, and there's been a uh, uh, there's I, I believe. It was either it was one of the Sean's, either Sean Shapiro or Sean Gentile. I can't remember who on on Twitter put out, um, you know, a, a study done on officiating and in, in in the Stanley Cup playoffs, and you know how how games are called, and it's staggering how many how it changes from game one and four games one through four yeah. to five through to five, six they and set, seven. They set the tone early and then they call, they call the tone. everything yeah. in the first few games. And then the whistles get left in the locker room in the fi- in the final games. Yep. So look like if, if you, if you don't want the officials 
to have an opportunity to dictate the game, just don't take stupid penalties. Penalties happen. You're rarely going to see a Stanley Cup playoff game where there's zero power plays. You know, penalties penalties happen. It's it, the guys are, are playing right up to the line and sometimes over it. Um, but you know, like I I, I know Bunting is a much uh, debated player in the way that he plays and how penalties are either drawn or called against him. Um, but the reason that he's having a hearing today, that's what do you how how do you defend that? Yeah, like that's that's he's, totally on him. That's new, not an official's problem. He's the new Nazem Kadri. He's retaken his role. Toronto's as, always got to have one. They right? got to have one idiot that just and I mean, and you okay? Want to blame the refs? You still lost seven to three team to a team that you took out their top two defensemen in Hedman and Cernak that yeah. barely played the game, and then they uh, they were down a forward too. They were down three players. Yeah. They had 15 players and still whooped your ass up and down the ice. 87-year-old Corey Perry is looking like a Hart Trophy winner against you. But sure, blame Wes McCall. Refs, yeah. Clowns. Of Bunch of clowns. I just, like, get tough. Get tough. Like, the playoffs, like, are you have to be a tough team in a play. And I don't mean fight. I don't mean check. But get some effing stones and don't melt every time pressure hits you. Yeah. Right? I remember years ago. Ken Hitchcock was talking about the Hawks. It was when the Hawks were they ended up losing the series in 2016 to the Blues. Yeah. yeah. And Ken Hitchcock said it's not about their talent, it's about their resolve. They never feel beaten. Those Hawks teams didn't lose, they just ran out of time. That mm-hmm. was their mindset. Yeah. Every game was you didn't beat us, we ran out of time. Like and it's the Leafs are the antithesis of that. They are so fragile. The slightest thing that goes wrong, and they completely crumble. Softer than baby crap. And if you don't get tough now, it's not going to happen. Like, if this is not the thing that someone in that room says, all right, get together, players only, whatever you want to do, enough of this. We are here for a reason. We are a great team for a reason. People have picked us to win the cup for a reason. Let's go out there and be, like, it's the Jason Hayward thing. Yeah. Right in the rain today. Like, stop this. Stop falling for this work curse where everything goes wrong for us. Bullshit. Go out there and change it. Change the effing narrative. And yeah. until someone in that locker room does that, that's what the, the Leafs this are going to leave. This is what it's going to be a hashtag this is what forever. what happens when you run the same core out every year and expect something different. Yeah. yeah you, I, can, you can add your McCabe's and your Lafferty's. You could change your goalies. But it's still the leadership is still the same guys that have done nothing except choke when it matters. And they still could win this series. They should. Yeah, it's, 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 it's one the first, game. It's the first game. But it's definitely yeah. not a good-looking trend because if you lose bunting for two or three games here for a suspension, he's getting at least two if he's getting an in-face hearing. Uh, well... Two, two, one playoff game equals two regular season right, games. He's going to miss at so, least one game. So yeah. then that puts you at odds. You're down yeah. an important player. Yeah. You're so, down one nothing. There's a You're lot of down talk. to the lightning. Like, it's all not a good situation to and be there's in. There's a lot of talk. Level. Some Leafs fans are like, oh, now it's Matthew Nye's time. You're going to put him in this pressure cooker so you can destroy his confidence because your fan base is a bunch of – if he doesn't score three goals and they lose, they're going to yeah. just – you're gonna turn on send here, him death threats here. Twitter? Here, nineteen year old, yeah, become no. a hero. You don't for do that. The biggest market in the in the hockey market or hockey in hockey. Yeah, their their goalie yeah. played like ass, which is again, a, well, both ex Washington Capital goalies played like yeah. ass last night. Uh, you know, so yeah, the Leafs. I'm not writing them off by any means, but that is just a really bad way to come out that bad against a team you've been knowing you were gonna play for over a month. Yeah. That you just yeah. beat up and down the ice on Monday of last week. They played each other. But the, the, that's the lightning, man. That's John Cooper. Mm-hmm. Let them have this game. Let them think they own you. Yeah. And then we're going to smack them in the mouth when it matters. That's like Greg Maddox uh, you know, hanging a meatball late in the game so a guy thinks he's going to yeah. get him. You, and you yeah. knew Cooper because <laughs> the narrative after that, that last regular season game between the two of the Toronto one-handedly, the, the narrative coming out of Toronto was, well, look at the Leafs pushing around the, uh, the Lightning. You know John Cooper was using that. Oh, well, everybody says you can't. The Leafs are put. It's nobody. Yep, he used that to their advantage, and they came out and said, oh, you think you're pushing us around? Take this. You got to do it when it matters. I love John yeah. Cooper, man. He's I, one I, of the best he's coaches. He's a fantastic he's he's great amazing. coach. He's won at every level. Yeah. Like, and it's, and it's, it's, it's not just the team he's, he's with. he never played <laughs> 
Hey. That Hashtag played the game. Like, I, that's a guy <laughs> that I can't wait for his career to be over that and goes in the media because he's got that personality. Yeah. I would it's going to be a while, though. I would love to. Yeah, it's going to be a while. He might oh, yeah. coach for another 30 years. Well, him just, him just with the narrative to the lightning of we're the underdogs. How, the, how are we the underdogs of these guys? Right. Yeah. yeah. Hell no. And there you go. Find it. Find the thing that's going to rally your troops, right? That's what coaches As do, we man. go back to the military and sports, because you can't ignore it because it's always connected. Rally your troops, get your soldiers ready, whatever you want to say, mm-hmm. and and go. And the Leafs just, they have lacked it for since the color TV era. Right. Right? Like, Find that dude. And as you said la- earlier before we got on the show, do we need a camera on Kyle Dubas after every No, we don't play? need the Dubas cam. No. And him, like, rubbing Jason Spezza on the back when the Leafs score. Dude, you know, why, show a guy, why show a guy in the press box updating his resume? It's pointless. <laughs> no. there, there, was a, there was a thing on, on Twitter. Somebody was posting a, a, a picture of when him writing something down. It says, what's Kyle Dubas writing down here? And I replied to it saying, uh, quote, get the HR department's number over at Fenway. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, right. who cares? Do we do? I don't care what the G. I don't. The only time I want to hear from the, see what the GM reaction is is when the team wins the Stanley Cup. Yeah. Oh. Or loses in heartbreaking fashion. Any, I, I love suffering of others. Anything surrounding Toronto in the hockey world is is content. So that's, that's why that's I, just how it goes. That's why I hate them. I'm just so tired of it. So For a team that's accomplished nothing since 1967. Get over it. So the two big upsets, obviously, uh, I, I don't know if it's a big upset, but this game, the 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 final score, the final was score was surprising. Ups- was surprising. Yeah. Uh, if you were a Leafs fan, would you be worried? I'm saying yes, yes, yes. Yeah. I'd be worried. The other one, Here Colorado loses a Seattle. That was surprising. Colorado hit the post what four times, three times? Uh, Might have been. I'm yeah. I'm not worried I'm about not Colorado. Worried. No. No. no, no, because. I dare Philip Grubauer to do that three more times. Right. I dare him. Yeah. I think he. I think like a like a prom night on fifteen, uh, like a fifteen year old on prom night, he blew his load a little too early. Like it's <laughs> over. It's done for him. Like that was his. That was his moment in the sun. So, yeah. Good luck with that. Do that three more times. I dare you. Oh. But of course, hours after I'm on the air here saying. Seattle's going to get swept. They've got the worst goaltending <laughs> yeah, in, yeah. in all the playoffs. And then we get, you know, Philip Gruber, Grubauer looks like Marta Ambrodeur out there. So, you know, yeah, I'm not worried about Colorado. Colorado had a ton of prime high danger scoring chances, mm-hmm. and that's not going to change. So Devils fans will... worried? I'd be a little worried, but not super worried. That was a young team's first taste of the Stanley Cup playoffs. They looked scared and nervous. Overwhelmed. And the Rangers... Very veteran-laden team. They've got a lot They've of guys that went to the conference final last season. Mm-hmm. They added Val- Vladimir Tarasenko, Patrick Kane, four Stanley Cups between them, lots of playoff experience. That was team that's been there, done that, versus team that's never done it, and they were a little too amped up. I, I would think this would see a much different Devils team puck drop in game two. Was Dougie Hamilton on the 2013 Bruins? Don't no, think right? so. No, so I can't Maybe, think of a, I can't think of a player were. that's on that roster that's been to a Cup final then, or even to much playoffs. Period. Yeah, because like, they're they're pretty young. A lot of guys making their playoff debut. Last uh, night. 2013 Bruins. What he was on there? Yes, he was. Okay, yeah. so yeah. I mean they have someone that's that's gotten that far, um, but yeah, I mean that's that's a team that you know collectively is is got a lot of good experience, got a lot of talent, but yeah, when when things ramp up, you got to have you got to have the ability to uh, to meet the level but of the we, playoffs. We talk about John Cooper, Andre earlier. Palat too. That's Palat. Right. He's got. I, a I forgot he was on the Devils. Yeah, I, I, Jeez, I too. But you got a guy. All right. Well, they have at least two then. In Lindy Ruff, who's been there, done that, mm-hmm. seen it all. Mm-hmm. He'll get them. He'll get them regrouped. We'll see what happens. Interesting note from that game: Chris Kreider became the all-time leading playoff goal scorer in Rangers history last night with his 35th playoff goal. I would have never guessed wow. in a million years never. that Chris Kreider has scored the most playoff game goals in Rangers history. That's crazy. It sounds bizarre for an original six team, but yeah. you got to remember for a, a lot of long time, the Rangers, the Rangers were weren't really very bad good. for a long time. And when they did make the playoffs, it was a lot of one and dones, or yeah. they were great in the 70s when they only had two rounds of playoffs. Yeah, right. <laughs> so Kreider's played a ton of games, a lot more than some of Rod Gilbert or you know some of the all-time greats. Yeah. 
But yeah, that's if you were to ask me, I'll get before I that happened last night. If you would ask me yesterday for a thousand dollars, who's the all time leading playoff goal scorer in New York Rangers history? I never would have said Chris Kreider. No. So congratulations to him. Chris Drury or Scott Gomez or something. I wouldn't even know where to guess. I would have guessed somebody from back in the day. I probably would have guessed Rod Gilbert. Yeah. Well, hey. That's good. Good for the Rangers. Um, good for their uh, chance score. chance to give the Blackhawks a better uh, draft pick. It's a good start for them. It is uh, Kreider with thirty six, Gilbert with thirty four, Mark Messier twenty nine, Adam Graves twenty nine, and Ron Duguay with twenty eight. Brian Leach with twenty eight. I was gonna say too, like yeah, Brian when those Rangers teams were really good in the nineties. Like yeah, they had Messier, but a lot of, like they had really strong. They were deep. offensive defensemen. Yeah. yeah. One of the you best. Know, a lot of their big scores were defensemen too. So, so yeah. up until two days ago, I would have been right <laughs> with my Rod Gilbert guess. Yes, you yeah. would have. <laughs> yeah, well done. Would have. That would have been good. Uh, the other one last night, uh, one of us picked the Jets to win a series in this show. I don't know who it was. Oh yeah, that was me. I'm wearing this shirt in honor of the Winnipeg. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, I I don't know. It, that didn't watching that game. It didn't feel as lopsided as the score. Did you guys get the same feeling? Oh, it from was. That? Vegas had no offense. Really? Yeah, I mean, it was kind of half-assed watching it. No. Yeah, Vegas, they don't care about Vegas it. did not seem <laughs> like it was ready to go. Strangled. They had 17 shots on goal okay. in Vegas. Oh. Yeah. They, they, like did, said, they did to Vegas what Vegas did on the run to the Stanley Cup final, and they just would not allow them to get any shots mm-hmm. off. It was they were, they were frustrated. And, hey, you start Lauren Brisson as your Brisson. goalie. Nice. That's what you get. Uh, That's what you get. This is another reason why I can't stand the Vegas Golden Knights. Their bush le- bush leaguery is at uh, they're at it again. <laughs> uh, in 2018, when they played the Jets in the Western Conference Finals uh, for the morning skates in Vegas, they kept the lights off completely off in the arena until the exact second they were supposed to be on the ice. So if <laughs> if, if like we know from covering morning skates, they say 10:30, but guys are getting guys on, the, are on ice the ice as early as 10, like 10 15. o'clock. Yeah, you know by 10:30, morning skates halfway over. So if it was 11 o'clock morning skate, they would not turn the lights on in the arena until exactly 11 o'clock, so they couldn't get on the ice. <laughs> apparently, that's kind of funny. Kind of funny. Apparently, if reports out of Vegas. Last night, uh, the exercise bike outside the locker room that a lot of guys will use, no pedals on it. <laughs> that's, well, that's harder to use that way. That's that's bush league. I'm sorry, that's bush league. That's that, that's funny. That's fun. That's that's, it, that's shit you do in the minor leagues. At least hockey all, players aren't superstitious or creatures of routine. Yeah, absolutely. According, <laughs> right? to, according to Elliot Friedman on the Thirty Two Thoughts podcast, uh, an unnamed NHL general manager heard that and called Freeman and was like livid like go beat them on the ice don't try and like beat them in the lot like these guys have routines like they need to do this stuff like it's it's oh, bush that's, that's one thing if you like you know you, you, you don't put the gator you give them warm gatorade or something like or sorry bio steel uh like yeah. but <laughs> to like mess with guys actual pregame routines in front of a playoff game that's bush league yeah that's why that team. Is, yeah, I don't take that team seriously. It's, have, it's pretty shady gamesmanship, but it is funny. It is funny as, a, <laughs> as, a, as an observer, as, as an outside observer who doesn't care what <laughs> Vegas does or what the Jets do. Like that's funny. <laughs> uh, two people, Young Dangle God and McLovin, want to know what teams do you not hate? Very few. <laughs> uh, I like the Carolina Hurricanes. Yes, I like the New Jersey Devils. Yep, I like the Colorado Avalanche. Um, there's three. All right, there you go. That's about it. Take that, young yeah. Dangle God and McLovin. Uh, who else do I kind of sort of like? Um, yeah, that's about it. I don't hate the Lightning. Yeah, there you go. I respect right. the hell out of the Lightning. I don't, sure. I don't hate Step them. Step up. There are a lot of teams I don't hate. I just don't like. You either. don't pay attention to. Sure. You're just indifferent about. Yeah. yeah. Like me with the Vegas Winnipeg series. Yeah. It's like, meh, Cubs. Well, you should, you should be more... Less indifferent now, more different now, uh, because <laughs> you picked the Jets to win, and you might, you're looking like a genius after. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're you're you're, a, you're up me. one. Yeah, well, we'll see how that goes. Yeah. Hey, uh, you know what? I'm not indifferent about, and that is beautiful golf weather like we have today. And uh, pins and aces, they made sure to hook us up. I wore it yesterday. The uh, lightweight golf hoodie from Pins and Aces. It is going to be. Uh, my official uh, shirt of summer when it's uh, around 60 degrees and it's kind of a gloomy day. I'm going to wear that every single day, uh, even if it's dirty. Uh, I'll just spray some Febreze on it. Pins and Aces, they have high-quality apparel, 
And that is why they are the official golf apparel partner of All City and of us here at CHGO. They have uh, tremendous apparel. Uh, check out pinsandaces.com. See their entire uh, catalog of apparel and accessories. They have amazing polos, hats, golf bags, and, of course, drum roll please, the beer slash beef sleeve. I have it. Jay has one. I think we're going to get another one coming to the office because you, you can never have enough beer and beef sleeves around. They are the, that is the product that you can store up to seven beers right inside your golf bag. Keep them cold the entire round. Beers, sparkling waters, sodas, juices, whatever you want. Uh, bio steels. Bio steels. I think you could fit a couple of those in there. Uh, again, check out pinsandaces.com. Use the code CHGO to receive 15% off of your first order and get free shipping. That is pinsandaces.com, promo code CHGO. I do believe we were supposed to get a beef sleeve test today. Just yeah. Say it. Well, <laughs> I'm going to Rockford after the game, so I didn't want a like a festering gravy-filled device in my So we're going to get a beef in my car. Sleeve. So I'm going to bring it next week, but uh, I have... I have opened the, the beer sleeve, beef sleeve. It will definitely hold beef sandwiches, oh. and it will definitely keep them warm. I'm excited. Have you guys seen their liquor stick too? Yes, it's like a it's like Are a me? liquor pump. I think in that's your, great your, that for some juice for the beefs. Isn't oh, that, a beef juice! Uh, it's a beef juice beef dispenser. Oh, and your beef you juice oh. to the golf course. Isn't that a liquor stick? Isn't that a isn't, wasn't that a Fifty Cent song? That was a Motley uh, Crue album. Close to it. Oh, yeah, oh, that was the Magic Stick. Yeah, oh, okay. Magic Stick is the actual song. Yeah, okay. But yeah. Liquor stick. It's, it's the same theme. <laughs> that's it's a punchline to a bad joke somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Liquor in the front, party in the rear. Isn't that what it is? Liquor in the... I, I don't know. Party. I forget what it is. Poker in the rear. Poker in the rear. That's what it that's is. That's the one. <laughs> all, all the, it's oh the sign your uncle has in his man cave. <laughs> liquor in the front, poker in the rear. Yeah, I believe there's a... I drove by a truck. <laughs> you ever see a truck on the way to Rockford? I'll have that on its mud flaps. Probably. I'm sure. <laughs> anyway... Last night, I was living large uh, on Fubo TV. I told you guys I cut the cord. There is a picture of my majestic LG television with not only the Maple Leafs and not only the Golden Knights, but also your Chicago Cubs. That's right. I was watching three games at once oh, how about that? on the Fubo TV multi-view. The great part is you can see the big part there is highlighted with the white circle around it or right, white square around it. All I do is swipe my thumb on my Apple TV remote to another screen, and the audio changes. Boop, boop, instantly. The audio changes. You can click on one, make it bigger, make it smaller. You can change the mosaic. It is awesome. Stanley Cup playoff time. It's the first time I've used that with Fubo, and it is killer. 140-plus live channels of sports, shows, movies, and news. Stream live TV from any device. Watch the most Chicago sports for the lowest price. And if you are a cord cutter, the only place to get Marquee Sports Network and watch the Cubs, the very exciting Cubs, is with Fubo TV. Go to FuboTV.com slash CHGO. Start watching immediately with a seven-day free trial. No contracts, no cable, no hassle. Just sign up and start watching. You get a 1,000 hours of cloud DVR included at no extra charge. Watch your local teams while traveling. We've got the NFL draft coming up next week, the NHL draft, the uh, draft lottery, May 8th, big night for all of us, mm -hmm. and, of course, the NHL and NBA playoffs. And like I said, the Cubs on marquee, and you get all the NBC Sports Chicago games with the White Sox and the Bulls and Hawks when they come back. It's great. Watch your favorite teams with Fubo. Use the link in the description to sign up for 15% off your first month of Fubo Pro. That is FuboTV.com slash CHGO, F-U-B-O-TV.com slash chgo all right before we wrap up the uh, the ice hogs begin their playoff series tonight in rockford against the iowa wild mm -hmm. mario and i are going to be there my first trip yeah. to the bemo i'm excited a little nervous yeah you know should, should be a should be a really good atmosphere uh playoff atmosphere in rockford gonna be a fun time um gonna be a little slightly emotional for me uh the last time i was at an ice hogs game was I, I went back and, and looked it up. February 7th, 2020. So that date is significant. Um, at the time, I was covering the team for uh, a, a different outlet. This was well before I was ever uh, paid to do this type of job, <laughs> what I love um, being out there. And that was at a time uh, in, in personally in my life where I was going through uh, some real career struggles um, so going back there, 
uh, for the first time in over three years is going to be uh, pretty pretty special uh, personally. And it's look, it's a special night. It's 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 playoff hockey. It's a home game for the Ice Hogs. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, should be a really good game. You know, it's it's it is a true rivalry game against the uh, against the Iowa Wild. Um, some big expectations for this young team. So uh, going to be very excited to get yep. there. Big game. Uh, best two out of three series. Best two out of three. And this is your only home game. You better win it. I don't want to say it's a must win, but it's kind of a must win for the Ice Hogs. You it's don't want to go to Iowa having to win back-to-back nights mm-hmm. on the road. You could have just stopped at Iowa. Well, that's true. Yeah, yeah that's right. true. Well, you don't want to go to Iowa. say that a lot about of our surrounding states. Actually, uh, <laughs> Iowa City is pretty cool. I yeah, I lost a few brain City. cells there one year. <laughs> <laughs> I went to I had a good uh, buddy that went there, and yeah, went to the Field of Dreams in Dyersville. That was really cool. I gotta do that still. That'd be cool. That was that was a that was a good trip. All right, let's go to let's go to Sunday's game in Iowa if necessary. We'll stop at the Field of Dreams. Nah, what day? Nah, that's Sunday okay. night. No, Sunday. I think I, no, it's uh, Saturday. They play Wednesday, Saturday? Friday, Saturday. I believe. Oh, okay, I thought it was Friday. Sunday. Saturday night. I think so. I'm. I'm you guys can go if you want. I'm not. I'm like, go. I'm All right, we'll see you some morning. It's only a five hour drive. We'll Let's talk about it. it. What right. else are we doing? All right, I'm uh, going to wrap things up. Bring the beef. If you loose. want an actual, like, solid preview of the uh, uh, Ice Hogs and Wild, Monday's podcast, we talked with uh, with uh, Alex Vlasic and uh, I always say Arvid Sonnenblum. Anders Anders Sorensen. He was our guest on Monday. Really good stuff. Go check that out. And we've got a couple other things we want to let you know about. We've got our new release at the CHGO Locker. The O Captain, my captain design it looks very, very sweet. Make sure you check that out. AllCHGO.com uh, to become a diehard. When you do that, you get a free shirt or hat of your choice. Once you're a diehard, you could save 20% on that O Captain, my captain design. Really good stuff. And we've got our draft party next week at Joe's on Weed Street. You're going to want to join the CHGO Bears crew, Bears. Goose Bears. Island Brewing, and other diehard fans for an NFL draft party at Joe's on Weed. The draft is here, and we're throwing two parties you don't want to miss. Come out to Joe's for an experience that includes an extended CHGO Bears live show, draft coverage, and premium and a premium drink package. You can purchase night one, night two, or both. Each night must be purchased separately. There is general admission, reserve table seating, VIP booth seating, and VIP seating right in front of the stage. We'll have giveaways and CHGO merch available for purchase. All tickets include an all-inclusive premium drink package that features Goose Island beer and cocktails Mm -hmm. from 7 to 10 in the main front bar of Joe's. Food will be available for purchase from Joe's Kitchen as well. This is a 21-plus event. You need a valid ID to get in, but go to allchgo.com to get your tickets. And, of course, like I said, if you're a diehard, you save 20%. So get in, and we will see you there. All right, we're going to talk to you tomorrow, 2 o'clock on the CHGO Blackhawks podcast.